everybody, my name is Emmy and I'm a developer advocate here at Wix and we're going to be going over custom validations, why you might want to use them, how they might work. So let's get started. So first I'm going to talk about what a validation is. Um, one common validation that you probably are very familiar with is passwords. So whenever you sign up for a new website uh, and make a an account, you're going to want to think of a new password and have this many digits and this many numbers and however many like special characters. And that's just one example of validations someone might want to put on their input fields. So the thing with Wix input fields is that uh, if you look at the settings for a lot of input types, they already come with a lot of validations. And in the UI, they call it things like settings, um, but in code we call it validations and validity. And when all of these conditions of uh, validations and validity pass and we can press submit, that's when the content is actually submitted. So if any at any point some property of the input is not valid, it's going to reject, reject that. And we'll see an example of that later. Okay, so here is my use case. I have two fields. Here, one is a text field to get your name. And then another one is an upload button. So not really like a field, but another form of input. And it says here, upload two to three images under 200 kilobytes each. Maybe I just want to see more animal photos, but specifically two to three of them. However, the file size restriction might be more useful for a lot of you. Say you want all photos to be under two megabytes each. So there might be a lot of reasons you're doing this. One common one is just to save space, and that makes things a lot more efficient. If you're having users directly upload things to your file management system, and in our case, it's the built-in content manager, you're gonna wanna make sure that they don't use as much space as they can and make sure that photos are compressed and optimized. And also if these photos or whatever files they're uploading will be displayed on another part of the site, it makes sense for them to be smaller and more compressed so that uh, other users can load that page faster since the file sizes are smaller. So we've set the use cases for our specific scenario. Um, and in this case, two to three images under upload. And each image has to be 200 kilobytes each or less. Before we get started and look into the code, I'm going to show you guys how I set up my Wix elements over here. So, so first of all, I have a content manager and I have a database collection called people. So I have two main fields here. One is the name and one is a media collection and it's of type media gallery called media. And on our UI, we have an input field. So this is just a basic text input and this is a basic upload button. Keep in mind, it should be the upload button under the input section of the elements and not just a regular button. And then I have this submit button and all of these I have uh, linked to my collection. So this is linked to the name value and then this will be linked to the media field. And then the submit button I have uh, connected as well and it should be performing a submit action when it gets clicked. And then, yeah, I have like a success message and a failure message here as well. And I'll go more into that later. Okay, so once we have everything laid out, we're gonna make sure we have the correct privacy settings so that users can actually submit their information to our database. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do is set these privacy settings for my collection. Um, and you find that under the three dots here, and then you set it to form submission so that anyone can submit content. And then we also wanna go into this data set over here and the data set also has another layer of permissions. So within the data set, we also want to make sure our, uh, our data is on write only mode since the users will be submitting their photos of animals and it's not going to go anywhere yet. But if it does, we'll set it to read and write. But for now, we'll keep it write only. Okay, let's put it all together. 
So we talked about validity and now we have these fields set up. Um, and let's look at the settings for this upload button. So as you guys can see, um, by default, the validation settings that were given um, in the UI is pretty limited. You can set the max number of files, but I also want a minimum number of files. And there's nowhere that I can really set a size limit for files. So how do we accomplish this in the code if we can't actually just use the UI to set the limits? Here we have the on ready function under the page code for the upload page that I have. Here we have an on change event handler for the upload button. And um, what it does is it hides the error mes message basically. And so every time a user uploads something, uh, it'll display the relevant error message and not just whatever was showing before. And then we have the on custom validation event handler. So on custom validation is where we're going to be defining our own uh, rules for validity checks. And it's going to take the value, which in this case is the array of files that are being uploaded. And it's going to take a function reject, which tells it what to do when the validity check fails. So here we go. Here I'm setting the value of upload button to a variable called files. And the value here is actually an array of files. Since we're uploading multiple, it gets stored into an array starting with zero. And in the next line, I'm checking if files.length is less than two. So if files.length is less than two, they either uploaded zero images or just one. Cool. So that's on setting a minimum number of files if you need to um, on top of like a maximum. So the maximum is already taken care of if you remember our settings in the UI itself. Let me bring it up right here. Yeah, okay, it's right here. Next, I have a for each loop and I'm saying for each file in the files array, um, I'm logging the file size and if the file size is greater than 200,000. So size in this case is measured in bytes. So 200,000 bytes would be 200 kilobytes. Um, it's gonna send out this reject function. And the reject message is file sizes should not exceed 200 KB per image. Straightforward so that our user knows what to fix. And otherwise it's gonna console log the file size of whatever is being uploaded so that we can verify that it is under 200 KB and that my code actually works. Okay, so, so far we've checked if the user has uploaded two to three images exactly. And also if each image in the array is less than 200,000 and otherwise it's gonna reject it. And so at the very end here, error message dot text, uh, which is the red label that we were looking at under the submit button. Um, and it's going to set it to the validation message of upload button. So the validation message here, if the file size is too big, is going to be whatever we put in this reject function right here. So since we're changing the validation message here and we're setting it to one of these two reject values, um, we don't want that to display all the time. Like if they change their upload items, we want it to display the corresponding error message. And that's why we have on change. We want to just hide the error message. And then if they have a new error, it'll update accordingly. Okay, and I'm just going to run through the example here. Um, I'll input my name upload three files here of dog fox and kitten dog is the one that's too big and it, it'll give the error message that the file is too big um, and it's going to be the big dog we re remove the big dog and it'll upload perfectly fine and then if we upload too few images it'll also uh, give an error saying that you need to upload two to three images. Okay, so we know everything went right because we have my name, Emmy Cow, and then under the media, we have fox and kitten, but no dog, no dog today. So that was just a quick tutorial on how to set on custom validation. Hope you learned something today and I'll see you guys next time.